We've heard just about every plant-based doctor and expert say that as long as you eat a whole plant food diet full of non-starchy veggies, fruit, and delicious whole starches, you can eat as much as you want and you'll be right at your goal weight, no questions asked. Is this really, really true for every single person? Hey everybody, this is Dylan. Yes, you probably already know that I eat a ridiculous amount of food in one sitting. I can clear 2,000 calories easy. I can eat like this much food in a sitting, and if we're talking salad, then this cute little bowl isn't going to cut it. I can clear one of these in just a few minutes. But here's the thing, not everybody has the same body type as I have. Here are a couple things that allow me to get away with it where you might not. One, I have pretty good genes for this day and age. In the Stone Age, I probably would have been much more easily prone to starvation because food was much more scarce, and it would have been more beneficial for me to have an efficient use of calories than the miserably inefficient use of calories that I apparently have because I can eat so many calories and it just doesn't seem to do anything. If you go back to some of my older videos, you remember that when I first switched my diet to a healthy whole plant food diet, I lost 30 pounds really quickly. I got pretty damn skinny. I'm 6'2", and I was down to around 150 pounds at my lowest, and I was still eating quite a lot of food. I'd be a gas-guzzling automobile, whereas someone who has more trouble losing weight or is more prone to gaining weight, even when eating healthy whole plant foods, would be considered something like a Prius C going like 50 miles per gallon, you know what I'm saying? So that's one thing. Another thing is I have a pretty active lifestyle. I work out a lot, I'm doing a lot of exercise, I have a fast metabolism, like which goes back to the genes, I guess, but I'm burning a lot more calories than the average sedentary person. I would even go as far as to say I have a tendency to binge eat, and it's usually not the low calorie density foods. For example, I like to eat dried fruit, so at night after dinner, I'll eat a whole bowl of dried fruit, not this size, but you know what I mean. And then sometimes I would eat oat clusters, but the thing is, when I did my challenge months, like I did the month of SOS Free, and then this Past month I did both SOS free and overt fat free, which I held on to for like three quarters of the month, but not the entire thing. Maybe I'll talk about that more on the live show this week, but when I took some of the richness out of the food, it actually made me less prone to overeating on them at night. For example, oat clusters, normally I'd put nuts in them. Well, this past month I left the nuts out, and after eating like three or four oat clusters, I was done. Instead of eating like, I would eat like 10 or 12 oat clusters and chug in the soy milk with them when they had the nuts, and sometimes I'd put in the vegan chocolate chips. But I digress, that's not really the point here. But another thing I wanna mention is the whole metabolism thing. I've talked about this in a few other videos, such as my calorie density video, but if you've changed your diet dramatically recently by shifting the food that you eat to the lower calorie density foods in my three main food groups that I talk about, then that could cause your metabolism to change dramatically all of a sudden, to overcompensate for the immediate lack of calories that you're giving it. This is obviously going to hinder your weight loss if it happens to you. For a lot of people, this is just going to go away. Your metabolism is going to catch up because you're living an active lifestyle and you're maintaining a very healthy diet. But for others, you need a jump start such as intermittent fasting. This means that you're going to shorten your food window to say eight hours a day. You're gonna stop earlier in the evening and you're gonna start again later in the morning. So you're gonna be in a fasting state longer. You'll burn a little bit more fat, jump start the metabolism, et cetera. That's one way of doing Doing it. But for others, and I would agree that this is a minority of people, most people aren't maybe like me, but they're also not the ones that are going to have trouble losing weight eating the whole starches, the fruit, and the non-starchy vegetables. But if you're one of the people that is having trouble, then you may just be burning a lot less calories than other people, and you may need to take that into account and be more conscious of your portion control. I don't wanna go as far as to say you need to count calories, but you are gonna have to experiment with reducing the average calories per pound of your everyday diet. Most people that eat like us are eating between three and five pounds of food a day. I'll admit, I'm a lot more than that, but most people are right around the middle three to five pounds. I don't want you to have to reduce the overall volume, those pounds of food that you're eating a day. So the first thing I would do if you're having trouble losing weight would be to remain eating the same volume of food, but to shift your calorie density to the left so that you're eating more calorie dilute foods. Eat more non-starchy veg, eat way more salad. My go-to non-starchies are like carrots, celery, onion, bell peppers, mushrooms, zucchini, tomatoes, and then of course your leafy greens and all these things. Make that a bigger part of your main meals. Try it just for a little while. Do a month where you're focusing more on the non-starchy veg and you're gonna be shifting your calorie density, your average calorie density off to the left. Pay close attention to how you sequence your meals. If you're not doing this already, this is one of the first things I would try. Start every single meal with non-starchies, either in their raw form 
or steamed veg. Try to get as full as you can, frankly, on the non-starchy veggies. Have some fruit intermittently throughout the day. I don't make fruit an, an entire meal in my case. That's just how I am. I just snack on fruit sometimes. I'll eat some bananas with some oatmeal or something like that. But for the most part, I don't eat all that much fruit. And then to top off, to finish off your meals, go to the starches. Go to the beans and the lentils and the quinoa and the split peas and the millet and the pearl barley and the oats. Finish your meals with those, but don't start them with it. Don't make your first meal in the morning oatmeal. Have some steamed veggies or something like that. There's nothing wrong with eating veggies in the morning. I learned this at the True North Health Center where there was always steamed or raw veggies every morning when you got to the buffet and it was awesome. So that's what I would do first. I wouldn't consciously try to say, oh, well, eat only till you're comfortably full because who the hell knows what that even means. Eat the a regular amount of food. Acknowledge whether you're a binge eater or not like me. If you are, you may need to take some additional steps in order to curb that habit. It's a learned habit. This isn't a thing that your body type just forces you to do. No, I binge eat at night because I like to binge eat at night and I've ingrained it into my head. So if that's something that you're doing, try to be honest with yourself, acknowledge that it's happening and start to take some steps. We'll talk about it another time, what you can do to start to curb that. And intermittent fasting, like I mentioned before, is one way of doing that. A 30-day challenge is one way of doing that, saying, I'm not going to eat after whatever o'clock every day. I won't care about when I start in the morning, maybe, but this is when I'm gonna stop at night to avoid the binge eating for 30 days and then see how I feel. You don't have to do it forever. It's just a 30-day challenge see what's up. And then if it's still a problem, if you're still just not getting it and you're one of those brains that's hyper conscientious and you just need to get on top of this, then you can start to use like a meal planner or the calorie counting or something like that just to get a sense of what's going on with you and then you can sort of try to dial it back. Dr. Joel Fuhrman often talks about maintaining your diet in a slight, what does he call it? A moderate calorie deficiency, meaning you're always eating a little bit under your normal day to day. And Dr. Fuhrman says that if you maintain this slight caloric deficiency, you're not just going to waste the weight of nothing. No, you're going to maintain your goal weight or you're going to reach your goal weight more easily and then hang out there forever. So while I do believe that it's true that most people can get away with eating as much as they want of the three food groups, not all the nuts and seeds and overt fats necessarily, but of the three main food groups I talk about, then they're probably not going to gain weight and they're probably going to cruise right around their goal weight. And there is a minority of people, and you may be among them, that isn't going to get away with eating all the food they want all day long, even when it's from the healthy food groups, and still maintain their goal weight. And you may think if you're one of them that you're super unlucky and that you're gonna have to deprive yourself forever on this way of eating or else just accept it that you're always going to be heavier than you wanna be. No. There's going to be a few months where you're dialing this in and figuring it out, but you're going to feel well, you're going to feel your best, you're going to get used to eating this many calories every day, and it's not going to feel like you're doing anything out of the ordinary. You're going to be reinforced when you look in the mirror and you reach your goal weight and you're happy with what you see, and it's just going to be your lifestyle. It's just a short period of time where you've got to make some even more dramatic changes in your life in your diet and you're gonna get there. And more than likely, even you will be able to go off and have an oily junk food cheat once in a while because you'll have done the work to know exactly where your everyday diet is. You'll come back home and you'll eat that way on the regular and once in a while if you fall off and do something bad, it's probably not going to affect your overall weight. Join us in the Well Your World Facebook group right here and check out one of these playlists for some more of my health videos and cooking videos and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching, bye.